In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Friday the 16th of August 2024, 19th week in Ordinary Time. And participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Priscilla Isaacs from Lusaka, Zambia, takes for us the first reading. Faustina Copera, who celebrated her birthday yesterday from Chitungwiza, Zimbabwe, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Jerome Kabuibi, from Oima Diocese in Uganda as he celebrates his priestly anniversary today. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring we pray to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. Your beauty was perfect through the splendor which I bestowed upon you, but you played the harlot. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 16, verses 1 to 15, and verses 60 and 63. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, make known to Jerusalem her abominations, and say, Thus says the Lord God to Israel, Your origin and your birth are of the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. And as for your birth, on the day you were born, your navel string was not cut, nor were you washed with water to cleanse you, nor rubbed with salt, nor swathed with bands, nor I pitied you, to do any of these things to you out of compassion for you. But you were cast out on the open field, for you were abhorred on the day that you were born. And when I passed by you and saw you weltering in your blood, I said to you in your blood, Live and grow up like a plant to the field. And you grew up and became tall and arrived at full maidenhood. Your breasts were formed and your hair had grown, yet you were naked and bare. When I passed by you again and looked upon you, behold, you were at the age for love, and I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I pledged myself to you and entered into a covenant with you, says the Lord God, and you became mine. Then I bathed you with water and washed off your blood from you and anointed you with oil. I clothed you also with embroidered cloth and shod you with leather. I wrapped you in fine linen and covered you with silk. And I decked you with ornaments and put bracelets on your arms and a chain on your neck. And I put a ring on your nose and earrings in your ears and a beautiful crown upon your head. Thus you were decked with gold and silver and your clothing was of fine linen and silk and embroidered cloth. You ate fine flour and honey and oil. You grew exceedingly beautiful and came to regal estate. And your renown went forth among the nations because of your beauty. For it was perfect through the splendor which I had bestowed upon you, says the Lord God. But you trusted in your beauty and played the harlot because of your renown and lavished your hollow trees on any passerby. Yet I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish with you an everlasting covenant, that you may remember and be confounded, and never open your mouth again because of your shame. When I forgive you all that you have done, 
says the Lord God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, taken from Isaiah 12, verses 2 to 3, 4 BCDE, and 5 to 6. Response is taken from Isaiah 12, verse 1 DE. And the response is, Your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Your anger turned away, and you comforted me. Gospel Acclamation Taken from 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Accept the word of God, not as the word of man, but as what it really is, the word of God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. To 12. At that time, Pharisees came up to Jesus and tested him by asking, Is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? He answered, Have you not read that he who made them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one? So they are no longer two, but one, what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, For your hardness of heart, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for unchastity, and marries another, commits adultery. And he who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The disciples say to him, If such is the case of a man with his wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, Not all men can receive this precept, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been made so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. 
He who is able to receive this, let him receive it. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ezekiel now turns to the people in the first reading of today and reminds them of their origin. You were Canaanites, meaning you were just pagans before I met you, says the Lord. All of us have been Canaanites. No one was born religious in terms of ancestry list. So even those people who say, no, Christianity is new to Africans. No, it is new to even Europeans. Oh, yes, even Judaism is new to the Israelites. They were Canaanites before. Remember Abraham was among the Canaanites and he was called from there. They were all pagans and at one point they realized there is one true God and they started following that God. But it was the God of Israel, the one true God who found them. All of us have been pagans before. Even our Muslim brothers and sisters were pagans before the 6th century AD. They were not there. So we see that we all have a beginning. We are not eternal. No, we all have a beginning. And God wants to remind us whenever we stray from his path that we have been naked before. Let us not think that we are more clothed than the way God sees us. God sees our nakedness and he saw our nakedness. He clothed us. He gave us the dignity. Remember that nakedness that is shown in the Garden of Eden. Where are you? We hid ourselves because we were naked. And now God started searching for humanity. He found that humanity and clothed that humanity and gave the dignity of a bride to that humanity and God being the bridegroom. I clothed you and after clothing you, after adorning you with the best of clothes from the world of fashion and you became admirable, you started becoming a prostitute. And what does Ezekiel mean? By becoming a prostitute, Ezekiel is saying, you started going after other gods. You left me as your spouse and you started going after other gods. I am going to restore this relationship with you, says the Lord, because our God is faithful. We may be unfaithful, but he never goes back on his word. He loves us and he will love us to the end. That's what we heard when we were going through the book of prophet Jeremiah. When we read on the everlasting love of God in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. I have loved you with an everlasting love. The gospel passage of today continues with this theme of marriage, of love. And it comes at a time when Jesus is challenged, asked. You seem to be convinced about what you do. You are very consistent and we want to find out from you. Is it lawful to divorce? Because divorce was rampant at that time, just like it is in our time. For small reasons, somebody could be divorced, even for not cooking the food well. The Lord says, no, it is not lawful to divorce. And it says, except for fornication. And if we want to understand this well, I will put you in the context so that you know that nothing should allow any divorce. Jesus is saying divorce should not be there unless you are not in a commitment you are just playing with each other you are just having fornication but if you are in a commitment with children involved you are not supposed to be divorced because it was not like that from the beginning in the beginning, he met the male and female and he said they become one. Therefore, what God has united, let no man put us under. We are taking marriage very lightly in our time. 
That's why divorces are very rampant. And why are they rampant? Because there are people in it who think that it's just a way to have children and continue with your own lives. Marriage is not like that. It's a commitment. Let us remind ourselves that it is a commitment. I have decided to commit myself to this person until death. There is nothing casual about it. And let us not take it lightly. No, that commitment is divine. Divine in the sense we are helping God to raise a generation that is going to take over from us. Or oh, mine, then how are we going to manage knowing that we are weak human beings, knowing that we all uh, fell and we find ourselves in confusion? The problem is, we know that we are weak, quite all right, but some of us are just too open about our weaknesses because we don't even respect the spouse I am with in my house. I don't respect. And I go on with my life as though I were a married single. I call such people married singles who live their lives as though the other person is not there. And they are doing all sorts of disgressive things, disgracing their spouses, disgracing their own children. No, enough is enough. Get back to your commitment. It's not too late. Peter... Hearing these things, realizes this is difficult. Knowing the weakness of a man who is fully charged 24-7, how will he manage with monotony? In this case, then it's not good to marry. Oh, then the Lord now turns to the other side of commitment. Listen, there are different forms of commitment. There are people who remain unmarried because they are made so by men. It used to happen in those days that for somebody to take care of princesses, of queens, that person had to be castrated so that there is no temptation anyway. And so... Those are made so by men. Others were being castrated in order for them to keep their voices. In order for them to have a sharp voice. So before puberty, they would be castrated. And they would be singing for God. They would be singing in choirs. And others made a decision to remain eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of God. And we have them here. We have priests, we have nuns, and I am one of them. We have bishops in the Catholic Church. They do so for the sake of the kingdom of God. And that is commitment. Oh, it requires a lot of commitment. And that commitment reveals to the world that God exists. Because if he never existed, such gifted men and women who are so intelligent, who have written books, cannot spend their lives in such solitude. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you. Thanks be to God.